hey, look, it's simple. Can you really blame him? Can you blame Denzel Mims? Of course Denzel Mims wants out of New York. The guy does... Look, he had some bad moments, but he was after some really good moments in the first game. He looked great last week in, you know, or a few days ago in the second preseason game. He's looked great in camp. He had a great rookie season. He played and struggled and had an awful second year. But he's a second-round draft pick. He's super tall, super fast. He constantly shows he has tremendous talent. Um, whether he succeeds in the NFL or not, can you really blame him? Imagine if it's, this is your life. Just imagine this is your life. You have everything up at stake in your life on this. You've worked your whole life for it. And it doesn't make the Jets wrong and it doesn't make him wrong. We're not going to put him in there if we have better receivers. But at the same time, can we really be that shocked? If he's working hard and feels he can contribute somewhere else, how much of his career does he want to waste just sitting on the sidelines playing against threes and fours and not really getting the opportunity? So we can't blame Denzel Mims. There's no... Don't get me wrong. As Green Bean says, the second if they trade him, he puts on another uniform. He's dead to me. Right? But that's... That's, that's fine and dandy, right? That's like any player. But until we trade him right now, there's a lot of players who demand trades. It pisses me off. I get angry at them. I say they're not team guys. I get pissed off. You know what? I am not mad at Denzel Mims. Like, if he, has, if he goes on to have a good career, then it's just the situation. I mean, we're in a situation where we can't expect him to be happy. Like, would you... Like, put yourself in his shoes. You have success your whole life. You're amazing in college. You have a really decent rookie year, even though you have a lousy coach and you're on a horrible team. The following year, you get sick. And it's not an excuse for the whole year, but it starts off really bad. You lose a lot of weight. You're seriously ill. Then you get you know, from food poisoning. Then you get COVID, and you're dealing with that. And then you just never get back into it, and you're not yourself. You just – it doesn't come as easy to you when you – you know, like you – you're learning the new system and whatever. You have a horrible, miserable year and the coach has put you in the doghouse. You dedicate yourself. You work your tail off. You're looking fine. You're looking good. They, they acknowledge that you've improved. But guess what? We've moved on. We drafted Garrett Wilson. We have Elijah Moore. We have Corey Davis. You know, for us, it's, hey, just hang out, man. Be a wide receiver five. And... Maybe if Corey Davis doesn't perform, maybe if it doesn't work out for Corey Davis in the future, you replace him. But Denzel Mims is thinking, then I'm 25, 26. Like, how long am I going to stay and not have an opportunity? So there's no hard feelings about this. There's no bad guy in this scenario. It is perfectly acceptable and actually advisable for if I'm his agent, I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying, hey, man, we got to get out of here and we got to go to a team well, you have an opportunity to win a starting job because you don't have that opportunity here. Now, to his credit, Mims never showed any negativity or bad attitude on the field. He blocks. He's enthusiastic. He's into it. He gives everything on, on every play. He's been great this whole preseason. He, in, w whether you watch him at practice, anybody who's been to the practices, he's been making amazing catches. But the key thing is he blocks. Like, he's, he's a full-team guy. He's not selfish. But it's sometimes you have to put, you know, it's life balance. Like, you know, same thing for all of us. You have to balance your own life needs. This guy is a super talented guy who believes in himself, and he wants an opportunity to show what he can do, and we might not be the best place to show it. So I do. I wish him the best, but the second he puts on another uniform, he's the enemy. Let's, let's get that straight. The second he's not a Jet, he's not a Jet anymore. It's going to be hard not to say I told you so if he, if he shines and becomes a star. Um, but at the same time, there's no guarantee he's not going to have the same issue somewhere else because you don't know that they're going to push him. You know, He might come in and think he's, he's the man, and he, he might be a guy that needs to be working his tail off to have success in this league. So we find out. But don't be mad at Mims. Don't be mad at the team or the organization. Sometimes there's nothing to be mad at. Sometimes it is what it is. So anyway, 
Those of you who join me live, thanks. I see you in the chat. But I've got to go. Just wanted to check in, let everybody know that it is official. Denzel Mims, Mims' agent has publicly, it's, it's public. It's not a rumor or anything like that. He has requested a trade. It doesn't mean he's going to be, tra be traded. It doesn't mean they're not going to work something out. But what it does mean is it's out there. And I don't, you know, let's, let's hope that if he's traded, we get something good. Let's see, hope JD works his magic gets us a decent return. And if there's any GM who can do it, it's Joe Douglas. Take care, signing out, see you tonight.